what we are going to be looking at this month sincerely between man and God was not as a result of, of the process of my thinking and that is what I titled remember Judas remember Judas and the Lord open our eyes he will open our ears and our understanding to receive in the name of Jesus. Now let me start by telling you this. That the day will never come. When I will stay on the pulpit. And speak from my head. The day I do that. I die. I speak from abundance of revelation. I listen to men of God. I listen to preachers. But I don't listen to repreach their messages. I don't need it. There was a time we were still in Living Spring. Pastor Yinka gave me one Bible study uh, topic. So because I was very busy, I now went to check my Bible study notes in Deeper Life. And I had them. Plenty. You know in Deeper Life we are like in Bible school. We are always giving this uh, leaflet. Every, what do you call it? Outline. Uh, we are, so I have a pile of it if we have not thrown them away. That was the day I found out that those things were actually useless to me now. But maybe they were useful then. I was looking for messages to preach. What to compile over a period of three, four years or more, I didn't see any message uh, that I could preach. I was not inspired. So I listened to men of God to learn, but not to preach or reteach their messages. I preached nobody's message. I preach what the Holy Spirit dictates. So in the lead or revelation that brought about this topic, this one came, remember Judas. Luke chapter 22 verse 17. Because we just need to look for a Bible passage that talks about Judas. Otherwise I can just continue to talk about Judas. Judas is somebody that we all know. When we were in our village, CNS Church, back in days, I think I was in class three, and it was during Easter, and we acted the Jesus' uh, film, the Jesus of Nazareth. And I acted for the me that you know. What do you think the personality that I will have acted? Judas. <laughs> so in the village now, some people still call me Judas. Somebody shout hallelujah. In Luke chapter 22 verse 17, and he took the cup, talking about Jesus, gave thanks, and said, take this. Divide it among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper. Saying this cup is the new testament in my blood. Which is shed for you. But behold. The hand of him that betrayed me. Is with me. On the table. It was referring to who? And truly. The son of man goeth. As it was determined. But woe unto that man. Who was that man? Whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. See, there are two kinds of relationships. In the motivational school, they could divide it or subdivide it to whatever. But principally, there are two kinds of relationships. In any relationship you find yourself, whether with your father or mother, or in the church, or at work, or with your friend, maybe in school, it is either that you are a principal in that relationship or you are a minor. The fellow you are relating with might actually be your classmate. See, Bishop, it is either that your classmate is superior to you or inferior to you. You are not equal. There cannot be two people that are exactly equal. 
Esau and Jacob were born the same day. Of the same parents. Were they equal? Even as they were coming out of the womb, God already hated one. And loved one. And that created a permanent disequality or inequality in their life. It would be very stupid for Esau attempting to be equal to who? To Jacob. Because the separation was already in motion even before they came. In every relationship, someone is a principal. Someone is the minor. If you fail to know and live by this reality, may you not miss your way in destiny. And that is how people miss it. God has elevated your classmate above you. You should live in the reality that is no longer your equal. You are still trying to relate with him as your equal. All the assistance and the help that might come from him, you miss it. That is the reality. Your friend has become a senator. And instead of you to see him and call him Senator Ojo, you are still calling him Ojo. And then he feels offended. You need something from him. Because he's, he was your mate. You get to his office. The protocol is that you should sign. And you are saying, Me? Sign to see Ojo. The Ojo you used to know is different from the Ojo that is now. The Ojo that is now is a senator. And you are not a senator. If you continue to live with him as the Ojo of the before, you miss it. Somebody lived with your father as houseboy. Today is a bank managing director. For goodness sake, you are still treating him as the, guy, as the guy who used to be the slave boy. Forever you will miss the opportunity and the benefits that God has even ordained that you get through him. Am I talking to somebody? Issues often arise in a relationship when the minor is attempting to be the principal. Sometimes it could also be the principal that is trying to deploy excessive use of opportunity against the minor. So review every relationship you are in, know your position, and live in the reality of that position. Tomorrow things might change to favor you. But today, live in the reality so that you will never miss your destiny. Yes, sir. There is no self-made man anywhere. If you are not made yet, it is either that you are yet to discover a beneficial relationship and then you key into it or you have missed that supposedly beneficial relationship. Where you are today, some people help you there. And you cannot move beyond where you are until another help comes. There is no self-made man. Jesus came to the world as a man. And yet as God. Yet he needed somebody like John the Baptist to baptize him. <laughs> Before Jesus began to baptize, somebody baptized him. They only came to tell John that the person you baptized the other time, he too has started doing what you are doing, oh, and everybody is following him. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, before John baptized him, why did Jesus not just come from nowhere and began to baptize people? Amen. Can you remember the two sets of disciples that he had? Whose disciples were they? John. They were only there when John, Jesus was passing by and John looked at him. You need somebody to reveal to others who you are. Otherwise, you are here with all the gifts and the ability 
But only somebody will need to talk about you to somebody before you are called. You miss it, you don't get anywhere. You will get somewhere. You cannot be better than the quality of relationship that you keep. And yet you cannot live in isolation. What is my authority? The earth we live in was created in partnership. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. We all know it. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the creation of this world was not done by only one entity, God. He got others involved. Number two, there was a group meeting. Right? Where the creation of man was suggested, deliberated on, and agreed upon. And even conceptualized before <laughs> the process of creation of man was embarked upon. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Number three. When man eventually was created, he was designed with a defect. Yes, sir. What was the defect? Man cannot live in isolation. It's not possible. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said it is not good that man should be what? Alone. Let me create a help. Meet. So you are a product of relationship. The earth you live inside was a product of relationship. So a man of certain, please listen to me. If you think you are the one I'm talking to, you are the one. If I mention your name, fine. If I don't mention your name, good. If I mention your name, go and do what I ask you to do. If you don't want to do that, so well, I don't bloody care. Somebody shout hallelujah. And if you are angry, come and collect the microphone from me. A man of certain age bracket that has no urge for a help meet has some issues with him. You have certain age bracket and you are not thinking of marriage. If you see our parents, they should carry your head to a spiritual house to help you wash it. Something is fundamentally wrong. There is a part of that man that is dead. That was not the way God created him. He's an abnormal person. Somebody say, I hear. Even if you don't hear, even if you don't agree, you shall have heard. So a man who prefers to be a loner also needs his brain checked. That means he's gradually running mad. You don't want to relate with anybody. They will come to church like that only with them when they go and sit in one corner like that. They are doing anything. They don't want to relate. They are just in isolation. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So when a man misses out in a relationship that should lift him, when a woman misses out in a relationship that should lift her, such a fellow will struggle for the rest of life. Because there cannot be a self-made man. There cannot be a self-made woman. As a, anything I might be in the capital market today, in the capital market I can tell you that I'm far more popular than him. I owe it to Tony Wozo. That's my ogre. Get certain things right. Sometimes we miss it. In all our relationships, sir, starting from in the maybe around 1990 or 91, I can count the number of times this man comes to my household. Cumulative. I doubt if Brother Tony Wozo has visited me up to five times. 
As a matter of fact, he doesn't even know where I stay. The place I stayed before here that I am saying now, he didn't know. <laughs> when I got married, I can't remember if he came. I can't remember. And then all our naming ceremonies, he was never there. Ezra, does that stop him from being my boss? The first apartment that I took in Ketu Alakwere, I can remember it was never there. The second one, it was never there. The third one, I think he came twice. And you know why he came? I invited one prophet, a pastor, to my house. And I invited him to come and see the pastor. That was why he came. Where I moved to after that place, he didn't know. Where I moved to after that place, he didn't know till I got to him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do I know where he stays? You shall know that I know. You know that I know where he stays now. <laughs> and how many years back now I made it a point of duty? Every year, even if it is one ororo, I will have to go buy and do what and give him. He is my source in the capital market. Learn to keep some solid relationship. You have to remain connected. If you break off, you can't make it. Prayers will not solve it. You will not struggle in life. Neman was a military general. But he was sick. Who helped him out? Awesome. That was the salvation. That was the relationship. Ma, if all the house help, if all that Neman was doing to the house help was to maltreat and shout and beat and render, the house help would see that this man was ill. She will know where he could get solution. But what will she do? She will keep her mouth shut. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you are a minor in a relationship, keep your own side. Do it well. If you are a principal, major in a relationship, what do you do? Do your own part well. Even if the relationship is going to break, never be at fault. See, there are, I'm sorry to say, there are people that I could see walked out of my life up to today, they are begging. They expected me, which is the mistake people make. They expect me to still respond to them the way it was supposed to be if they had not walked away. When you walk out of a life, by the time you walk back, you have lost your relevance. Somebody shout hallelujah. So learn to keep your relationship. Be mindful of relationship that you will walk away from. And for goodness sake, when you turn your back, don't turn your face again now. Why are you coming back? Peter! How many? Not this one. Somebody shout hallelujah. I mean, are you the one? Eventually became the team lead in the company of Jesus. How did he get there? His brother. And that is brother, of course, John chapter 1, verse 35, 36 to verse 42. In other words, because that is brother. That was what we were saying, but that was late. That's what we are saying now. What is the name of the guy? Now, number one. Andrew was a far more experienced disciple because he was first a disciple of John the Baptist. 
And John the Baptist was in ministry before Jesus came. And so he was with John the Baptist. Now, when Jesus was passing by and John made the comment, and then the Bible said, himself and one other disciple, they left John the Baptist immediately. And so they got enlisted in the company of Jesus. As a matter of fact, they passed the night with Jesus. So, when we begin to talk about the first comer, he was one of the first saints. If that is what should determine team lead, who should be the team lead? But he saw his brother, brother call that savior that we have always heard about. Singing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Eventually, that man that became that man that he invited became the rock by revelation. But Andrew had no choice than to what? Operate under him. But see, if Andrew had no good rapport with Peter, he would have discovered the Savior and he would keep his mouth shut. If only Andrew, sir, had kept his mouth shut, Peter would have remained irrelevant for life and destiny. Today we will not be reading anything about him. He will have died to away like a fisherman. In fact, not like a fisherman. He will have died to away as a fisherman. So if you want to be a great business person, you must work such that referrals can increase. For those in business, you serve somebody, serve the person with dedication, serve the person at your highest level possible. It is such people that will go and talk about you to another person, another person, to another person. Somebody shout hallelujah. If your customers keep quiet about your services, it's only a matter of time that business will die. Because you will be, you will be, you'll be forcing yourself at all times to generate new customers. And I think why the Holy Spirit is bringing the issue of Judas was that Judas was one guy, one man that had great opportunity. But he ended up destroying himself in destiny. How? Let's see how far we can still go. He had an encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter. Only few people had it. He had a revelation of Jesus. He got enlisted as a disciple of Jesus. He, he even was a believer. As a matter of fact, he was the Akako, the treasurer. And yet, he missed it. May you not miss it. So the best that could happen to any man was to have direct access to Jesus even that time. He did. Hmm. Hello, church. Destiny will never be disabled. God does not share this thing equally. There are people that God has destined to be governor. All of us cannot be governor. There are people that God has destined to be head of government, to be president. All of us cannot be president. There are people that God has destined to be above you. Either in business, either financially, either spiritually, or whatever. Please do your analysis. Stop deceiving yourself. Men are only born equal. They cannot live equal. When life and chances bring you close to such a person that is higher than you, draw your ears like this. Draw your ear like this. If you don't do that, you are not following what we are saying. No. God has destined me to be talking to you now. 
God has destined me to be holding microphone and I'm giving you instruction. Hold your two ears. Are you holding it? When life and chances bring you close to such a person, cherish the opportunity. Any attempt at making yourself equal will destroy you. See, I hear. Release your ear. Even if you don't agree, you hear or you don't hear. When you are close to someone that was afar off before, you might see how ordinary he is when you eventually move close. But what is making a man who he is is not what eyes can see. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You have opportunity of sleeping with him on the same bed. You now find out that the man can snore. You now move close to the person. And you can see that the man can tell some little, little lies. You now move close to him. You will see that the man can brag. Let us say the truth. There is nobody who doesn't have a fault. Including you that is critiquing another person. Well, it looks gentle, but he has his own fault. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, man, I'll be paying for to do you call this how Hallelujah. When you eventually see the fault of that fellow, and you have always seen him afar off, you have developed so much respect for him. If you lose that respect, that which God has ordained that will get through him, you will never get it. Is anybody listening to me now? Number two. Judas was a competitor with Jesus in the company that Jesus created. Can he go far? See, my landlord, when I was moving out of his house, he now went to police. And then, because he just did some nasty things, no time. I want to, I want, I want, I want, okay, let me even recite the story before I ran off. He took me to court because he said I was not paying his rent. So when I eventually had money, instead of me to pay the rent, because we were already in court, I just decided that I should move out. I believe it was orchestrated and led by the Holy Spirit, really. Because as soon as I moved out of his house, it was as if a leak was covering the glory of my life. The thing was just moved. And between then till now, my life has not looked back. 2004. One day I will tell you further story about that. So when I now got money to move out of his house, I was driving, where is Ola? That type of car that he was driving that time, that uh, Mitsubishi Asbach, that was what I was driving. And one time like that, the landlord just collected, he's an electrical, he was a tailor. Not a fashion designer, tailor. No, that man can't be a fashion designer. <laughs> if you describe him as a fashion designer, you'll be wrong. He was a tailor. But he built the house. One day he just collected rent. He increased the rent collected from everybody. I went to buy a car that was better than all the other cars that all of us tenants were driving. What was the car? A Mercedes Benz baby. They call it baby. Baby Benz. Baby Benz. That car, one day that I drove to park out. I didn't want to come down. It was succulent. Tokumbo. Rene Tokumbo. Succulent. So I was parking behind him. And then I went out. By the time I came back, how he moved my vehicle. My key was still with me. Oh. How he moved my vehicle to the back. No. He moved, he moved, he moved his vehicle to the back. He now moved my vehicle to the front so that I would not be able to go out with my vehicle. 
How he did it today, I cannot tell. Maybe he used a uh, bracadabra or juju or something. He was parking behind, I was parking behind him. My vehicle was the last to the gate. By the time I came back, I now saw his own vehicle at the back. How he shifted my vehicle, I cannot tell. Why? He knew that I was moving out. So he wanted to seize my vehicle against the house rent. And I insisted I was not going to pay him the house rent because you are taking me to court now. Can we come from court and see me, friend? I said, let the case be determined in the court. When it is determined, I will pay. So he went to the police. Later, I now went to report him to him. No, it was even him that took me to the police. I now called my lawyer and went to the police. At the end of the day, the DPO ordered that he should be arrested. But I told the DPO, I said, you don't arrest him because he wanted to lock him up. I said, see, if you fight your landlord, he owns his house. You detain him, you will eventually release him. The house is his house. <laughs> if a landlord is at fault, he moves out. If the landlord is at fault, tenants moves out. You don't fight with the landlord. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I asked that it should be released. But look at Judas. He was competing with Jesus in the company of Jesus. Who will move out? John chapter 12 verse 3. Somebody bought expensive oil to anoint Jesus. A Judas came. He said, why should the feet of Jesus be anointed with such an expensive oil? In John chapter, according to the record of uh, John chapter 12, he said, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? Immediately he saw the oil, he knew the value. <laughs> he attached value to it. And he began to say, now, the significance of what that woman was doing was never his concern. He now said, uh, we can sell the oil and give the money to the poor. Jesus now looked at him. He said, the poor you will always have among you, right? But the job that penned it down said that, he didn't say that because he loved the poor, he said that because he was a thief. Now this is my commentary on it. Criticizing a principal will not dethrone the principal. It will only destroy you. If you have nothing positive about your principal to say, keep your mouth shut before you cage your destiny. Am I talking to somebody? You can forget my name. Don't forget all this we are sharing. It's the secret of life. This is life class. There are people that are so obedient, we call them yes men. They are wise. They are wise. Go here. They are the ones that can stay and chop. But those who think they are wise, they have gone to school. They think they know. They think they are bold. They think they can talk. They don't last long. They are soon removed. And when they are removed, they get into oblivion. Cherish a relationship that has ever benefited you. That you know this one has benefited me. If you live in the spirit, you will know the relationship you should stay in. Somebody shout hallelujah. There are some that have used their mouth. Somebody was good to you. He's been good to you. He's just extraordinarily good to you. And the next thing you can say about him is that he's using your style to do juju. 
The person will only go into oblivion.